This is a guide for how to use a visualizer, all the features that it can unlock to help you in your classroom. A little checklist on the screen of all the things that it could possibly do. I'm going to go through setup and then I'm going to explore the apps that you can use and then eventually go on uh, how it can be used along with PowerPoint. All right, setting it up. You just plug your visualizer into your USB on your computer uh, and then open up a camera app, which I'll show you in a moment. However, when you're in there, you can adjust it uh, up and down to get a good look at what you're looking at and also control the light, which is good when you move between classrooms. The functions that we've got for the visualizers in school are on screen and the four buttons at the top are really useful. Uh, the first one is an auto focus button uh, and the second one is a little switch which goes between single and continuous focus. And if you're just having a document underneath the visualizer, uh, the single S mode is really useful. If you were maybe recording somebody, uh, the other mode, the continuous one would be good, uh, like if you're recording a video maybe. Uh, the other buttons are for the exposure, just making it lighter or darker, depending on which room you're in and how light it is. And then there's a little button which tells you whether it is in fact on. We have two different uh, programs that you can use the uh, visualizer with. Uh, clicking on the start menu, there is a camera option near the top, which is the usual camera option. And I find that this works best, but the school also have a visualizer option, which is just there on the left as well, which has a couple of extra little uh, features. Inside the camera app, uh, they have a number of uh, options on the right hand side. You can flick between a document viewer, a photo mode a, and a video mode, as well as a couple of other things, but they're the major ones to use. If you were going to change uh, the camera, because sometimes it might bring up the camera on the computer first and you want to switch for the visualizer, there's a button in the top right that you can click on just below the X and it'll allow you to just switch between uh, different things that are plugged in or different cameras that the computer has available. If you want to make a note of a student's piece of work, you can just click the camera button when you're looking at a particular piece of work and it'll save it. And it saves it to uh, your particular documents folder. So if you just go to uh, your drive, your W drive, and then it'll go into my pictures and a special mode, a special folder called camera roll. It's particularly good for taking pictures of good pieces of work and then revisiting them later on. The document mode is particularly, particularly good for making a document really clear. So here is a mark scheme that I have put underneath the visualizer and it's just picked out a section of it. If you click the button on the right, just the document again, the one that's in a blue, a white circle on the right, it'll save it to your camera roll. And there's the picture there. It's much clearer. It's easy for me to display it as part of a presentation uh, to the kids. Now, if you were to use the specialist visualizer software, not the camera app, it has a few other items or so other features rather that are useful. So it's got a little magnifier option there. So I've selected it from uh, the options on the left and it, I can now zoom in on different parts of my document. It is, also has this little band option where you can black out everything but a particular thing and it helps you focus students' attention on particular parts of a document uh, and you can select the different widths and things like that. Now, the visualizer works particularly nice with a new version of PowerPoint because it allows you to insert little uh, windows or bubbles with the camera like the one that's in the bottom right hand corner here. And therefore you can present while you're um, while you're also showing them uh, bits and pieces. I've got a use of that in a moment, but for now I'll show you exactly how to get that up and running. Start by going to the insert button on the top of PowerPoint and select cameo option. And then it'll insert a little camera bubble in your screen, but you can do a couple of things with it. First of all, it might automatically default to the computer's camera rather than the visualizer. So clicking on the preview button on the left and then selecting which camera will allow you to pick the visualizer. It also gives you loads of options for different size or different types of uh, camera bubble. So the circle one is picked at the moment, but you can pick rectangle ones and you can pick other shape ones. Uh, and you can also click and stretch them so that they take up more of the screen. And here is one particular way that I have used it this year when preparing my year 11s for their GCSEs. I've got a question that they were struggling with on the left there and then I would usually put a piece of paper or a whiteboard underneath the camera app 
and be able to just do my writing and show them what I would do while uh, while showing the question as well. I think this is particularly good and useful if you're trying to record uh, a lesson for when you're out and you want the kids, students to be able to access it or the cover teacher to be able to kind of see what you are doing. Uh, and I think it's particularly useful for that. I'm sure there's many other things and ways we can use visualising in school, but hopefully that takes you through all the all the basics.